the ray of acceptance, the act of taking or receiving something offered, favorable reception, approval, favor, the act of assenting or believing, acceptance of the theory, the fact or state of being accepted or acceptable. No matter who you are, or what you have done. You are accepted in the eyes of God. Yes, we need to look at our actions, for there's a force that is keeping you alive. This force is not judging or condemning. It accepts you for who you are. You are good. Your essence is divine. Your actions may not reflect that. So with this in mind, we can begin to change and grow into something that is so much more than what we currently know. These laws are gift are yours. All you need to do is accept them. Nobody will be turned down in this journey of life. We all have the opportunity to let go of our ways that are trying that are tying us down and accept a brand new way of looking at life. The process of giving and receiving is much like our breath. We breathe in and we breathe out. We receive and we give. Some people only know how to give, while others only know how to receive. We need a balance. Life is in balance. The law of silence brings us into balance. Through meditation, we are filled up. And that state is like a cup that is filled with water and is spilling over the sides. In that state, we are freely giving to others. Meditation is the way and means to get filled up with life itself. That is our true nature. This will help to receive and accept what the world wants for us. This is not a dog from a dog from. This world is a reflection of love. When a gift comes our way, we should accept it. By throwing away our excess baggage, we can see that this is part of life. Everything in nature is the process of giving and receiving. Each breath we take is the divine action which reflects this. Each one of these laws, our gift is yours. All you have to do is open, and each and every day this gift will come into fruition. As this gift ripens, you would naturally share them in your daily life. This is a natural process. You don't have to force yourself, but just be open to who you truly are. In time, you will change. In time, the more you become aware, automatically you will reflect and make changes that will embrace your life. Your life. These things will help you to become a better human being. This is what life is all about. We have so much love and so much to receive. It's like we receive from the gifts from within and share them with the world. In this state, even a simple smile reflects divinity. We're becoming mature and responsible human beings. We can't change the world if we only give. I'm sure mothers know this. Over time, they get burned out. We need to receive help from others if need be. Once again, this is a delicate balance. By slowing down, we can be in harmony. So much of our life is preoccupied with work and getting to and from that we are lost touch in the hurriedness of existence. By slowing down, we see, why did I rush so much? What did I accomplish? Is it truly worth it? By slowing down, we can actually start to receive these gifts that are part of who we truly are. It is so simple, yet we are quite complicated. We place clouds over our inner vision. We think the more we accomplish, the better our life will be. By slowing down, you will accomplish more because your concentration will be greater. You will learn how to control your mind. So the more we open up and accept these gifts internally, the more we can accept except externally when someone is offering their service. It's up to you.
The Ray of Content Dictionary.com The state of being contented, satisfaction, ease of mind. The act of making continued, satisfied. As we can see from the definition, the rate of contentment is a state of being where one is connected as a deep level of satisfaction and the mind is at ease. Our present day lifestyle is so fast paced that it doesn't allow us to truly sit down and smell the roses of life. So many people rush through life as there is no tomorrow. We train our kids to have so many activities that they hardly have time to just play around. Somehow, we got our minds more than better. Most of us rush out the door and drink our coffee on the commute to work. We try to cram as much as we can during the day. Even our bosses are always looking for ways to give their employees more to do. To be honest, it's absolutely insane. The only way truly to be content is to be in the present moment of life. In this state, the mind is at ease. The mind is not agitated, and you are not in a state of dissatisfaction. For thousands of years, the great top teachers have taught this. Only you can calm down the winds of your mind. The mind of, <coughs> of humanity at times is howling. No wonder we are so unhappy. We go from one thing to another during our daily life, and nothing can quench one's thirst. It's always like we are ghosts and we're trying to get drunk on a bottle of whiskey. We can drink bottle after bottle and can't get drunk. The whiskey just runs through us. The ancient ones weren't crazy when they said we had to slow down. They saw the mental conditions of humankind. They were once in that state, yet through time and practice, they learned how to be content. They learned how to control their mind. So many people say, yeah, but I truly don't understand. As a society, we are so driven by what we are going, by where we are going. We're always looking for happiness and contentment outside of ourselves. It's like we are on this freeway and incredible scenery is all around. Yet, we are so busy getting to our destination, we never enjoy the ride. Every day, we just drive on the freeway of life. We go through the motions of living, yet we truly don't know the essence of life. In this state, we never reach our destination. Personally, I think that our entire society needs to learn the law of silence. We need to recharge our batteries every day and stop the endless chatter of life. Meditation over time slows down the mind and one begins to enter into a greater field of awareness. This awareness is peace of mind and contentment. You will still be super active, but by slowing down your mind, you will be accomplishing more in your life. Your mind and concentration will be like a laser. You will accomplish more with less effort. It's like we are running to stay in place. Imagine for most of us, we are on a treadmill of life. We are constantly running. We are running away from our problems. We are running to work. We are running away from our relationships. We are running back to home. We are running out for a bite to eat. A wise man just turns off the treadmill and calmly lives in the moment. It may seem like time has stopped for this person. In this state, one is beyond time and space. Whatever you need to get done will be done. There's no state of having to do it now. I can see why the great samurai warriors of old developed a passion for tea ceremonies. This precious art teaches a person to truly live in the moment. The ceremony is quite long. It trains one not to look into the future or else boredom work will occur. You can't look at the clock and say, when is this frickin' thing gonna end? It can teach so much. A warrior may be a good at battle, it has he conquered his mind. 
Anybody can fight, yet is truly a wise man who has conquered his mind. The ancient Japanese warriors knew this, the tea ceremony, and many of their ancient practices were developed to train the mind. <clears throat> Imagine that you are a warrior. Most of us are road warriors, no matter what we do or where we came from. You need to conquer your mind. This is the ultimate thing that a human being can accomplish. This will lead to a pure mind. This is your true state of existence. These sacred laws were to turn your mind into gold. You are already gold and needs to be purified. The baggage that we hold on must be released. This path is probably the most challenging thing we will ever do. Yet at the same time, <coughs> the most rewarding. Remember, all it takes is one small step after another. You're already, already walking in life. Why not walk in a different way? Walk in a manner where you truly know that you are walking with life. The Ray of Self-Control, Dictionary.com. Control or restraint of oneself or one's actions, feeling, etc. A person who learns the Ray of Self-Control and puts it to use is truly a wise person. The hardest thing in the universe for a human being to learn is self-control. Most people think that they are in control of their lives, but if they stop and think, most of the times we are reactive beings. We react to what their external environment gives us. A person who is in self-control is one who stands in the center of the hurricane. The winds of the mind do not touch that meaning being. Most of us are swept away by the winds throughout time. We have been told that by mastering our mind, we master life. The most difficult thing is self-control. Many people think that meditation is so simple that anyone can do it. They are correct. Yet when you sit down and focus on your breath, you will see that the mind acts up. It will conjure up all sorts of things for you to think about. Through time and self-control, one begins to break through this fog. Many people are fascinated by the martial arts. They love to watch it at the movies. Yet in order to be good at it, it takes a tremendous amount of self-control, not only physically, but mentally. Most martial artists that I have met never want to fight. They truly want peace. Fighting and defending themselves is the last resort. A good martial artist usually is good nature through practice and self-control. He or she has reached a state where they have entered into a state of peace. Their mind and body is in harmony. They are in a great physical, mental, and emotional state. In this state of awareness, they are truly, totally comfortable with their divine aspect. If confrontation occurs, they will use words of kindness and compassion. Each person who learns self-control has to take the same baby steps, steps that you and I take. Nobody gets a free ride. We must all learn to control our emotions and impulses. Most of the world wars are caused by this. How many of the great teachers in the past have talked about putting into practice the art of self-control? We can control our life. Daily, we can take baby steps and start paying attention. Daily, we can enter into the law of silence and begin to tame our mind and emotions. Each one of these defined laws will help you to have self-control in your life. This is truly the goal of life, to master yourself. It is exciting. 
Each one of us can do it. Each one of us has to overcome the lack of self-control that we have. Many people think I have self-control. You do, yet it can be there at a deeper level. I'm sure even the Dalai Lama practices self-control in each and every day of his life. Until a person enlightens, we are constantly learning self-control. This for me is an incredible game of life. We all deck cards in our life and through self-control we can learn how to master this game. It's an internal game. No one can play it for you, but help and support is on the way. This is the game of life. The more you partake in this inner discovery, the more your life will be practical and down to earth. You will emanate a source and happiness around you. Your personal obstacles and excess batter, baggage will lighten you, literally. So this is an incredible game. We must take a conscious decision to change day by day. Learning self-control is a moment by moment, year after year decision to improve your life at all levels. <clears throat> you will stumble and fall. If this is a video game, it will be the most challenging and the most rewarding. You would win the game of life. Through this video game, you would see that both internally and externally, your life will begin to change. So embrace the art of self-control in your life. Learn ways how to control your mind and emotions. If anger comes up to you and you are justified, just let it go and gather up strength to have a true smile on your face. Contemplate in the eyes of the universe. Is it worth to get mad? This is such a minute ent ent entry in time. Why should I bother to pay any attention on this matter? You can diffuse your own time bomb. In the course of practicing, many will blow up <coughs> in your face. But when you do succeed, even just once, you will have the effect that takes hold. Remember, it's not stuffing your emotions, but it's learning how to transform them. It really is divine alchemy. It's transforming negativity into something that is positive. This is magic at its finest. A magician may pull a rabbit out of a hat, yet a true magician pulls peace and happiness out of a negative situation that literally transforms the situation. These are just a few things that come up to the surface about self-control. In each and every moment, you can learn how to control yourself whether it's at home or the workplace. You can learn how to control not only your words, but your actions. One can learn how to train the body, mind, and emotions to be a true expression of what life can be. You are truly the artist creating yourself. Your life is the canvas. Through your thinking and your emotions and actions will reflect your present day creation <coughs> For the world to see. When we see that each of us has been given the canvas of life and free will to create whatever we want to make life exciting, we can learn to become masters, artists of our own creation. Each one of us has a unique piece of the puzzle. Only you can contribute your piece of the puzzle. Learning self-control is the way. A wise man understands that life is like a video game. Even a ch child learns self-control playing the game. As we learn more, we go to the next level and the game becomes more challenging. We start to master the game of self-control. Over time, our bottle is forgotten in the gutter. We are in another level of life where we dine in a divine manner. Each of us can learn self-control. You can master a game called life.
the ray of happiness, a quality or state of being happy, good fortune, pleasure, contentment, joy. In our Constitution, it says that we have the right to pursue happiness. Each and every one of us desires to be happy. We spend our entire life pursuing it. Happiness is like a rainbow in the sky. You can see the rainbow touching the ground, but as you get near the rainbow, it moves. Happiness is quite like that. It is always within our grasp. At times we can even hold it, but then it will disappear. We search for happiness everywhere. For some, I'll be happy when I'm out of middle school. I'll be happy when I graduate from high school. I'll be happy when I graduate from college. I'll be happy when I'm married. I'll be happy when I have kids. I'll be happy when I have a new boss. I'll be happy when I go on vacation. I'll be happy when I retire. We are always looking for happiness. We want that some external event will make us happy for the rest of our lives. We search for it and never quite find the Cinderella type happiness. The prince who we marry ended up being someone who is imperfect, just like us. So where do we find happiness? Can we truly be happy and be involved with this one? Does true happiness exist? Is happiness a state of mind? If I become rich, will I truly be, be happy? Everyone equates happiness with money. You know, a lot of people who win the lottery spend all their money and lose it around five years. If you don't have money and a big sum is given to you without proper financial planning, you can lose it. For thousands of years, the great teachers have said that true happiness lies within. It does not exist in this world. Imagine at the time of your death, everything you own will be taken away. You can't bring any material possessions with you. <clears throat> Happiness is truly a state of mind. <clears throat> I've been to third world countries where the average poor person is selling something on the street. <clears throat> he has his entire family with him. Happiness is written all over his face. I've seen people who are super rich and their lives are miserable. Happiness truly comes from within. There is an internal well where one can drink and be filled with such happiness and joy. It is our true essence. Meditation brings us into that realm. Meditation is the key that unlocks the doors within. Imagine your true nature is infinite happiness, yet we spend our entire days aspire lives looking in the wrong places. It is inside us all the time. At times, I see the majority of us are looking in the wrong place. We just need to redirect our attention within. From that well within, we can tap into the source and bring that happiness to the surface. Over time, it will start to fill up your life both externally and internally. You will see for yourself that happiness exists everywhere, but do we have the eyes to see? It's only by refining ourselves over time do we see the beauty of life. In this state, we don't strive, if only I had this, if only I had that. Every moment you are drinking the nectar within. I'm not saying as soon as you start to meditate that all your problems will go away. This life is a journey. Each and every day, we take one step after another. Over time, by being aware and being self-empowered, we truly become happy. We realize that happiness is truly a state of mind. Nobody can take it away. As long as we strive to reach happiness externally, it will come Angle. It's like the mirage that we see in the desert when you are thirsty. You see the image and you're happy because there is water. Yet when you walk up to it, 
and disappear. Many people may say, I'm happy. I don't need to go within and find it. That's great. We are saying, we are saying something a little different. We are saying that the entire universe is comprised of happiness. By being aware of the force behind all life, you will become happy. You don't have to depend on some external event to trigger happiness. Your existence through happiness, by discovering your true nature, you will be happy. Array of non-attachment. We come into this world empty-handed, and we leave this world empty-handed. The ray of non-attachment helps us not to get frustrated by life's events and our own personal attachments. During the course of our life, we become attached to our car, our house, our job, our riches. Whatever our mind is, is attached to, when this thing gets taken away from us, it causes suffering. Everything in life is an impermanent. Nothing external is changeless. Everything created ultimately goes back to the source. Many of our sufferings are holding onto an idea or concept or object. And when something goes not according to plan, we hold on. We then become disappointed or sad that things in life don't go according to, to plan. The ray of non-attachment allows us to have life live freely without being tied down by our attachments. Through the law of silence, we enter into a state of awareness that is, was, and will always be. Over time, one by one, our attachments start dissolving one by one. It's much like a sugar cube being dissolved by water. All the great books of the past have taught us about the importance of being not attached in one's life. Yet what kind of training have we gone through to help us become not attached? Once again, if we conquer our mind, we have conquered the world. Meditation and contemplation is a means to slowly melt into the source of all life. Over time, this awareness begins to infiltrate into our daily lives. We are much, we are more carefree and relaxed. We can accomplish more than others because the mind is sharp as a laser. When we are, are, are attracted to people, places, and things, our mind is, is hopping from one thing to another. We are restless. We are at unease. Our mind wanders. We have difficulty to control our mind and thoughts. The wise person spends their life solving this mystery and actively begins to take the course of actions to enhance one's life. This ray of non-attachment is applicable not only to our world, but to our inner world. We can hold on to our experience. It's like holding on to sand in your hand. It will slowly slip away. All our disappointments and sufferings are mostly from our attachments to life. Our mind thinks that by attaching itself to something, it will become happy. Yet this is never the case. The foundation of Buddhism clearly talks in fine detail in more precise ways what happens when we become detached. There they are much more eloquent than I am. These are plenty of incredible books talking about the destructive nature of being attached. By being aware of this right and entering into the silence, we begin to train ourselves not to become attached. When we do, and we do suffer, we can remind ourselves that everything in life is impermanent. We can, day by day, Train ourselves to see what is changeless, boundless, and never dies. Never dies. This is our true nature. The source lies within. 
by connecting to your true nature every day and over time, moment by moment, you will see and comprehend these words. It is a state of awareness that comes from within, and they become a reality in your everyday life. Okay, of course, it takes time. This is a maturing process. But by being aware and focused on your inner nature, you will grow day by day. You have infinite potential. By being non-attached doesn't mean that you can't truly enjoy this life. As a matter of fact, you will enjoy this life to the fullest because you will be vibrating with life itself. Your mind, body, and emotions will be in tune and in harmony of who you truly are. You will truly become free. Of course, you will still have off days. You will still have a lesson to learn. I have not mastered myself, but even in my present state, I rejoice in being alive. Life is a grand adventure, and I'm happy learning and growing. I'm so grateful to be aware and conscious that these gifts lay inside of my being. There are years for the asking. This life we live is a great series of lessons where we can learn to master. Life is the highest education. There is so much to learn. We can't even hold on to our experience, spiritual experience. If we do, we will be disappointed. Life teaches us to hold on to your divine essence. If you hold on to everything, anything else, you will become disappointed. Once we truly begin to understand that concept, we can start to implement the process of self-discovery. With our maturity growing, our understanding of this ray begins to grow more and more. We then can take off our painted glasses and see the world as a reflection of ourselves. It's amazing that our concepts and our attachments to this world is the source of our problems. Once you see the world with a new vision and you train your mind, your life becomes happier. I really don't understand why we don't teach these basic laws in our schools. Our nation and the world at large would be in such a better place. It seems like so much attention is put on what we do instead of who we truly are. All the latest technologies don't bring us any more happiness than what we have before, yet we want more and more. We think as a nation, as a whole, that material things will bring us joy. Last night, I saw a survey that only 12% 12 12 of the people in this country enjoy their job. Something is wrong with our state of being. We need a new way. It's been there all the time. We have never been taught that common sense is uncommon. We think we have it all together. Yet the lines that are dictated by advertising and the media will never bring true happiness and joy. These ads for a new car will never give you true happiness. Your new car someday will be towed to the dump. Then, where will your happiness be? We need to look beyond the superficiality of our existence. You are truly divine. Your essence is boundless and changeless. Our present day scientists know this, yet we can continue to live in a state of denial. This is not about becoming a monk or a priest. We are talking about discovering your true nature. In doing so, you will become free. Your life will be absolutely incredible. No words can describe it. This is your true nature. Through the law of non-attachment, you will become free. This is your true state. <clears throat> you are the bird in the cage. Open the door inside and become free again. Remember, only you have the peace of the puzzle. The world will be in a better place when you realize this. We are building sandcastles in the sky, yet we think that it is permanent. One day, the ocean of life will dissolve your precious sandcastle. 
What is the foundation that you are standing on? Is it a rock? Is it made of rock or of sand? Your happiness depends upon it. The Ray of Empowerment To give power or authority to Arthur Ives, I empowered my agent to make the deal for me, to enable or permit. Wealth empowered him to live a comfortable life. As one is walking on the journey of life, we see that times we are reacting to each and every situation that comes along in our life. We are like the leaves that get blown by the wind. We react to every situation that is negative and uncomfortable. We never quite feel that we are co-creators in life. It's like our destiny is in our hands. It is totally out of our hands. We are left to the whim of circumstances. Empowerment is the journey to reclaim your divinity. It's a journey to discover who you tr truly are. Do you think that if you were the sun, the moon, and the stars walking around in a human body, that you would have any concerns? You would be totally empowered. This journey of self-discovery is the road to true empowerment. Over time, through practice, we begin to reclaim our true essence. We begin to make conscious decisions both internally and externally. We become aware of the proper decisions and actions that we need to take to make our life more alive and in touch with our deepest desires. Our attitude changes from the poor me syndrome to one who is empowered with his or her life. We take responsibility for our own actions. We start to be aware. We see that everything we do has consequences. In the past, we don't see them. We had blinders on. By becoming aware, we see the effects of our actions, both internally and externally. This is the maturity of man, mind, transforming into human, you, divine, man, mind. In this state, we become more aware of our true nature. For thousands of years, people from all walks of life have discovered the road lies within. True empowerment is a state of mind and needs to be cultivated. By planting the seeds over time, we water the seed and till the soil and pick out the weeds. At some point, there is a harvest. Each year, we do the same process. So as the years go by, we become more empowered. Empowerment is not some magic pill that we take in an instant we will change. Life is ever changing. We change for the better or worse. It just depends on our focus. Empowerment is a conscious de decision to make in each and every day. We are in charge of our own destiny. Nobody will hold our hand along the way. We may get directions, but we have to walk each and every step. These are not some words that have been alive for a short time. These same words have been spoken for thousands of years. You are in charge of your own destiny. These sacred laws will bring you in touch with your true nature. You don't have to give up on the world. You don't need to sacrifice your life. You can truly live your life at the same time. Focus within and see that you are truly more than what you see with your eyes. You are incredible. Your essence is of life. In this state, you become empowered. These rays exist inside of you. They are your true nature. The following is a daily ritual that you can use each day to get in more contact with your divine nature. Each day, you choose one from the list and say yourself the divine prayer. Throughout the day,
ponder and contemplate on the word of the day. Try to make each and every action a part of the array you are concentrating on. You will see that over time, you begin to acquire more and more qualities in your daily life. The more you pay attention to yourself and your thoughts, the more awareness you will bring to yourself. Pay attention to your negative thoughts. As a matter of fact, throw them out the door. Pull out your inner weeds. The faster you stop complaining, blaming, and justifying, the better your life will be. These three negative qualities will never get you anywhere in life except, except for placing you into the dumps. Just try for one day to stop complaining. It may seem easy, but try. <coughs> you will see that it is harder than you think. The mind has <coughs> been conditioned to complain. We hear complaints everywhere. Everybody has something to complain about. This is the state of a reactive mind. We blame and criticize others for the positions we are in, yet we don't see that we dug the hole. Nobody places us here but ourselves. By proper thinking and by taking proper actions, we can take ourselves out of the hole and use the same soil to plant seeds of these rays. We can simply train ourselves to think act and to be in a manner that is conductive to our true nature. This is who we truly are. All these exercises that we do are training ourselves to go to a different level of existence. The more empowered one is more, we can simply smile at life's problems. A person of empowerment laughs, laughs at problems that he, he she can see behind them. They concentrate on solving the problem while the reactive person gets angry or run away from the problems. This is a huge difference in our perceptions of life. The more aware we are of discovering our we the more aware we are, the greater our doors of perception will be. When a person begins to incorporate these divine laws on an everyday basis, and enters into the law of silence, incredible things will occur. So daily, look at your weeds, pull them out, moment by moment, take a look at your thoughts. If you have a negative one, ignore it, and don't pay any attention to it or focus on it. Most importantly, don't act on it. You are playing the video game of life, and it's your life, play to win. These are the life cheats sheets that you can use in your everyday life. Video games buy cheat sheets to learn how to master video games. Well, these are life sheets. They will help you go through the many different levels of your own video games. You must learn how to master yourself. You must learn that your own negativity doesn't serve you or others at all. Negativity is like someone holding your head below water. It doesn't serve you at all. In essence, someday it will get you in the end. It's so easy to be negative. Everyone can do it in a moment's instant, but it's very difficult to master your mind. This is what a game is all about. Think and compliment for a moment and how your life would change if you to totally in embrace these divine rays in your personal life. You would truly be a gift to this world. You would truly bring your piece of the puzzle and enhance the world to be a better place. Remember, wherever you focus on, you become. Your external life is a direct reflection of your inner life. No matter what kinds of clothes you wear on the outside, your inner sense of yourself will be reflected on the outside. You can't fool anybody, including yourself. If your life is not going the way you would like it, start this spring cleaning of yourself. 
Throw away anything that does not serve you and start to take practical actions to be in alignment with who you truly are. The goal is to be aware moment by moment. We're starting to learn how to program your, your own life. In the past, everyone had, had a say in your progress, the good, the bad, and the ugly. It was a total mishmash. No wonder at times we are the way we are. At a subconscious level, we had good things stored in our memory and a lot of useless junk. So many of us try to hold on to this junk because it's all we have. These laws are to help you to let go of the junk and replace it with something that would truly benefit you and the world at large. Practical actions. Do the treat of life ritual every day. Spend time taking a mental shower with a different ray every day. Contemplate daily and pull out your negative weeds. Meditate daily. Read books that will improve your mental and emotional health. Throw away negativity. <clears throat> it, literally, it is literally a burden and a weight that is holding you down. Pay attention to all areas of the life. Get exercise, eat good food, and get plenty of rest. Each one of these areas affect our emotions and mental health. Try to stay away from people who are extremely negative. Daily have gratitude for what you have in your life. Make room for change. Don't be comfortable and not willing to grow, otherwise you will decay. Everything changes. Attend a seminar. Tree of Life Prayer We have just gone over the rays of life. Here's a simple prayer that we can do every single day. You simply just take one of these rays and we have this as a prayer. Hi, Richard. Call upon the powers of heaven and the powers of the universe to come down for the purpose of this ritual. I, Richard, affirm to the universe that I have or am in me a full power and through the ray of patience, this energy and power of patience flows through me and I am one who brings this to my universe. I confirm this to the universe and to God and I thank these for all things in my life. May light and knowledge Continue to flow to us humans. Amen. Every day you can take a different ray and use this in your daily life. The Law of Laughter Recently, I was flipping channels on the TV and a documentary on the Sundance channel was on. <clears throat> This documentary was focused on Mike Myers, who is famous for his Austin Powers movie and Deepak Chopra. They were discussing the similarity of comedy, comedy and the quest for life. Both of these have a point in time where one becomes enlightened or understanding his game. When a joke is told, there's tension in the air. As the story unfolds, it builds and builds with anticipation. At the height of suspense, the punchline is told. The energy of realization is transmuted to the audience, and they themselves understand the joke and waves of laughter occur. This audience all laughs, ha ha ha. A tension has been released. Maybe as a political joke, comedy has a means to laugh at any given state as situation and bring us a state of awareness. In the same matter, the Jewish, the, the Zen Buddhists have koans, which are light word puzzles. To the ordinary person, it does not make any sense. Like, 
<clears throat> what is the sad sound of one hand clapping? But through their meditations, they reach a level where they understand the koan and a aha experience occurs. This is similar to understanding a joke, but at a deeper level. This is internal comedy which leads to enlightenment. Both of these are critical and crucial for our everyday life. Laughter is indeed the best medicine. I'm sure many people know of Norman Cousins when he got cancer, that he watched all different sorts of comedies for over a month. Laughter on a daily basis will heal us. He used laughter to heal his cancer. There is a theory that cancer are angry cells, but by being aware of laughter, we can heal. We can heal. Laughter can transform energy cells into happy and healthy cells. The Taoists have a meditation techniques where they imagine certain parts of the body to be a huge smile. A smile from the pelvic area all the way across. A smile from the stomach area <clears throat> all the way across. A smile at the rib range all the way across. A smile from the mouth. A smile from their eyes. A smile from their forehead. <clears throat> By doing this at a daily basis and paying attention to the laws of health, <clears throat> they keep disease at bay. The Taoists have been known have been known for the remarkable long lifespan. Truly, laughter breaks up any emotional residue. This residue may be released from our mind and bodies. God gave us a natural release mechanism called laughter. Many people are so serious in life, they become emotionally constipated. They lose the joy and the true meaning of life. We are born into this world as it was a setup by learning from your mistakes. There is no other way to learn. So God gave us an all decaying, on all beings laughter. We can laugh at ourselves at the world at large. Life is truly a joke. There is a punchline called enlightenment where everything makes sense. Have you seen the Tibetan Buddhists? They are a group of beings who truly know how to laugh. Look at the Dalai Lama. He laughs at his own mistakes. This is how we learn. If we get down on ourselves, it doesn't help in any way or what way whatsoever. It's like putting chains on us. Laughter is truly a divine gift. Even if you don't believe in God, it will enhance your life. The Buddhists don't believe in God, but look at their emotional life. It is based upon happiness and joy. So you can learn to use the law of happiness in your daily life. Look at situations where a difficult, hot position comes your way. Use the power of laughter, laughter to see the clarity of the situation and blast away the negativity. You can see through different eyes. Laughter is the key. Laughter can be one whole experience and one whole experience. Both of them lead to the same door. Laughter opens the door to creativity where you can totally transform yourself in any given situation. By being open to creativity, you can learn how to dance with life. No matter what obstacle comes your way, you can dance around. The Indians hold Lord Shiva as the Lord of Dance, the Lord of Life and Death, the Lord of Transformation. Each one of us die every day and are reborn every day. What I mean that by dying, when we lose perspective and get so involved in the world, part of us dies. We forget our true nature. Every night we return to the source. We get charged from the source of life, and in the morning we wake up. In the same manner, we consciously wake up constantly and be aware of the process. These tools will help and assist you in this manner. You can die from your past condition and be born into the great laws of life. This is awareness coming to your forefront. As you can see, we use laughter along the way. 
we can laugh with life. The best teachers I have ever had use laughter as a means to learn. How many times have you heard a boring lecture? Can we truly learn? Yes, you can, but it's difficult. Yet a teacher who can teach with humor and laughter truly can deliver the message and understanding. A boring lecture speaks to the mind. A fun-filled humor talk full of humor will affect the mind and heart. It will go directly to the soul. This is where laughter can be used. My daughter <coughs> is in the first year of college and sees, she sees how laughter from the teachers and lack of determines the quality of the lecture. Laughter enhances the situation. Personally, I think all teachers should be required to learn how to use laughter in their teachings. It would certainly improve our educational system. Just that one idea alone. How many young kids are turned off to education and learn because of a boring teacher? Life is not boring. If your teaching style is boring, you are doing a great disservice to your students. You need to lighten up. Get a, wild with, get a little wild with life. Do something different. Break through your boring ideas. No wonder so many kids are frustrated with the whole education system. It needs to be transformed. Each and every part of society can be enhanced with laughter. We need to learn how to use laughter with our political systems, our social systems, our education systems, our religious systems, and our business systems. Laughter is the means to understand life. Practical actions. Learn how to laugh at yourself. Laugh at obstacles and problems. Watch comedies instead of violent movies. <clears throat> Practice the Tao smile meditation, even for just one minute. <clears throat> Learn to laugh like when you were a child. Reclaim your innocence. Get rid of your hard edge of life. Look at children for examples of laughter. Don't take anything too seriously. The Law of Giving and Receiving The whole universe is in a state of giving and receiving. This is the law of life. <clears throat> in each and every breath you take, you breathe in oxygen and you breathe out carbon dioxide. You receive oxygen and you give carbon dioxide. Now the trees and the floor receives this carbon dioxide and gives us back oxygen. This is the circle of life. Our natural state of evolution is similar to a tree. When a seed is planted in the ground, over many years, a wonderful fruit tree, fruit tree is grown. It may take many years before fruit starts appearing. There is a stage in the tree of life that each year hundreds of fruits appear. The true is fully matured and is the process of truly giving and receiving. Its gifts are its wonderful fruits. We are very sim similar to that wonderful fruit tree. In our life we stand out of, we start out as a seed. Over time we begin to grow and mature. Hopefully somewhere along the way we begin to realize the more we give, the more we receive. This is the law of life. We begin to see that in our everyday life, we can make a difference. We can offer a smile to whoever we do. We can help someone with the need of existence. We can help out in gifts of kindness. The more a person goes into silence, the law of giving and receiving becomes more powerful. 
You tap into the infinite source of love, and in that state, you automatically want to give. This is your true state. You receive such incredible gifts from the silence that inner well springs up and you want to share these sweet waters of love to the world. You don't even have to say a word. Just one smile can brighten someone's day. So the more you give, the more you receive. The more you receive, the more you give. This process goes on forever. Somehow, mankind has a, ten has a tendency to not be in this state of awareness. It does exist inside of us. Some people are very good at giving, but they have, have a hard time receiving. Look at how mothers give constantly to their children. Yet, if they only give, aren't open to receiving, over time, they may become better. Consequently, the one who constantly receives and doesn't give will become self-centered and not be a pleasure to be around. There must be a balance. We must learn balance. For me, balance is slowly obtained through silence. By being in silence, one learns that life is constantly giving and receiving. I learned that every day when I meditate and I'm constantly receiving in my cup is getting full. So in my day-to-day -day affairs, I can share from that cup. I believe that you first must fill up your cup, drink some water, and then share your cup with others. Now every day, we must fill our cups. We must realize that all the religion in the world emphasize to fill your cups. All religion are teaching us the way. We breathe such a sweetness of life. It is a matter if we are a saint or a sinner. Life goes on. It has such compassion. It simply gives itself life to us. It doesn't judge, or we would never be around to see this planet. Life simply is. Life goes on. Can you imagine the beauty and the ugliness it has a witness? Life is probably at times cried itself to sleep. Only man can change its way. We hold the key by the midst of our pride. He will not open the door. Life goes on. We may have tainted breath, but life is ever so sweet. Life teaches us to be complete. Life, the beautiful life we have. The Law of Giving and Receiving, Part 2 In order to be filled, we must enter into silence. Only through the Law of Silence can your cup be filled. Each one of us does this on a constant basis. Our world will transform. We'll be constantly living in the Law of Giving and Receiving. Remember in the Law of Silence, when countless teachers have recommended paying attention to your breath day in and day out. No matter what you do, focus on the inhalation and exhalation of your breath. Over time, you will see that behind your breath lies the power of love, which is keeping the entire universe alive. You will be in a constant state of giving and receiving. This is truly an incredible goal. I see that as possible. I'm not there yet, but I do see how many times during the day I'm truly connected. It's just a day-to-day -day state of existence and fine-tuning yourself. It's learning how to be in harmony with all these incredible laws. The laws that they are focused on will truly transform you. It doesn't matter who you are or what you have done. There are stories of the past of people who have committed Horrible crimes and learn how to totally transform themselves into beings of kindness. This is our true state. The other is a hard shell that needs to be taken off. We are the fruit of the nut, not the hard shell. Unfortunately, many of us have been taught the other way around. That by that being tough and edgy is our true nature. A
kindness and love is for sissies. Nothing can be further from the truth. By tapping into your true nature, you are tapping into the power that created the sun, the moon, and the stars. This is incredible power, yet its manifestation is love and kindness. This is the building blocks of life. We don't realize that this is true strength. Anyone can get angry, but a wise person is one who's conquered his or her mind and that loves true presence in one's life. In that state, the law and giving and receiving is in balance. I feel so happy these days to see so many famous people in Alba now in the world. It's so incredible. So many people say, oh, it's because they want more fame. Well, they, they already have fame, I think, and so much more. When you reach a state of abundance, which they have, you begin to search out ways to help those out in this world. They are healed inside with abundance. You start to find out ways to give back to the world. I applaud anyone in this manner. They can simply hide in their mansions and never come out. They dedicate their lives helping people in need. I recently saw the Larry King interview with Brad Pitt, where Brad is helping to rebuild a township in New Orleans. He raised millions of dollars and taking this project into his own hands. I applaud that he and his actions of his wife. They are so inspirational to me. The people of America are given people billions of dollars, are donated to nonprofits each year. I pray that this money truly will go to those who need it and that the people who are stealing this money stop and realize the power of cause and effect. Our nation has faith that the money donated will go to a proper source. We as a nation, and like all nations, respond to situations where other nations need help and assistance. Let us constantly carry that out. We need to really pay back all debts and they can truly solve again. If I ran my business and my household like our present day financial debt that we have incurred, I would have lost everything years ago. We must become financially stable and then we can truly help this world. The laws of giving and receiving pertain to all areas of life. We must be in balance in all areas of life. We must learn how to stop conflicts in a peaceful manner before they get totally out of control. Otherwise, we will spend trillions of dollars often disrupting entire nations and throwing them into chaos. It will be with the equivalent of what happened to New Orleans happened to the United, entire United States. Every human in America would be affected. So let's learn to be in balance. We must learn more to be in harmony with this sacred law. It is the law of life. I have been following the life of Bill Gates now for over 25 years. We all seen how he came to be one of the richest people in the world and at times the richest. But what truly has impressed me is the evolution of where he is now. Imagine having everything and making money, more money per year than a lot of third world countries and seeing that you could do anything, and for many years, he probably did that. Yet something happened, something occurred to him outside, where he began to see the world's problems and wanted to help out. In the last 10 years, he has totally changed his perspective around. Imagine stepping outside from his position of Microsoft and dedicating the rest of his life to his foundation to help others in this world. And I believe that Microsoft is a tight run ship. Money does not squander there. I can guarantee that this foundation will be the same thing. He will hire the best of the best. And I'm sure he already has. In a few short years, he has the largest foundation in history. Even Malcolm Forbes gave billions of dollars to this foundation. I don't think Michael, Malcolm at all. I don't know Malcolm at all but I bet that he doesn't give money out like this until it's fully, until he's fully convinced. What I'm trying to say is that millions of people are giving in their own way. Even one cent from the heart matters. 
You can help this world through one simple smile you know money required. Each one of us has the capacity to give. Don't wait for your government to help establish peace. First establish peace inside of you and everything else will follow. The world is changing for the best. Now let's all be aware of what we can do. I pray that each one of us can truly begin to apply at a deeper and deeper level of the law of giving and receiving. May every nook and cranny all over the world be filled with love, kindness, abundance, health, and shelter to all. May we all pray in our own ways. May we all realize that all of us want the same thing, peace. May those who think that through guns and violence that peace may be attained, realize that peace only comes through peace. War only brings more war. It's time for man to bring himself to the next level of maturity. We have everything in place. It's time for us to change for the better. Hopefully, this will give you some simple sparks of inspiration. Just one spark can lighten your life. Practical actions. Meditate on your breath. Notice that your breath is constantly giving and receiving. If you are a mother who constantly gives, be open to receiving. If you constantly receive, do something to help another person. Give a smile to everyone you meet and notice what happens. Donate your time or money to a worthy cause. The Four Noble Laws Truths These Four Noble Laws are known to Buddhism as the Four Noble Truths. They are the foundation for all Buddhist traditions. Yet in my eyes, in the eyes of many who seek to discover these laws, these laws are universal. The Buddha was probably the greatest psychologist on earth. He probably knew more the nature of the mind than anyone else. Since then, thousands of beings have taken the sacred knowledge and applied it to their daily lives. The Buddha declared that there was a way out of these crazy patterns that we create in our daily life. There is a way to overcome all the obstacles of the mind and to be in a place and in timeless, endless, beyond space and time, a state called enlightenment. I'm not a Buddhist. I don't belong to any Buddhist organizations, but I truly believe that these four noble laws are truths. The more I meditate, the more my understanding grows, and I realize that suffering gets more refined the deeper I go. It's like that analogy of peeling the various levels of the onion. The first layers are easy, but as you go deeper and deeper, you realize that suffering exists at a very deep level in our mind. The mind is like a grain of sand in an oyster. It constantly has some sort of irritation. The gall is turning the grain of sand into a pearl. This is what Buddha discovered. He discovered a practical path to overcoming all suffering. This path is not morbid. Many people think that this path is the path of suffering. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It is a path of love, happiness, mercy, compassion, forgiveness, patience, and tolerance. It's a way to discover your true nature. We are all Buddhas. We just don't realize it. The goal is to realize who you truly are while you are alive. This will make the world a better place, not only for you, but for all around you. One, first law, the nature of suffering. The first law states that human nature is not perfect, nor the world around us is not perfect. So consequently, during our lifetime, we will suffer. We will endure physical suffering, such as pain, sickness, injury, fear, frustration, depression, and disappointment. Everything in life outside of us is impermanent. 
so we can never attain true happiness fixated in the world. We try to hold on to happiness, yet it steps away. Law number two, origin of suffering is attachment. Because our mind thinks that happiness exists in the world, we become attached to the world at large. We strive for happiness in things that aren't perfect in nature. Because we think that happiness exists in the world, our mind is conditioned to always look outward and never within. So over time, our mind becomes conditioned and we forget our true nature. By doing so, we forget who we are and therefore, suffering takes place. Law number three, the cessation of suffering is attainable. For thousands of years, the ancient ones have proclaimed that there is a way to end suffering. They have taught that by discovering who you truly are is the way. You are already enlightened. You just don't know it. Law number four, the path leading to the cessation of suffering. The way to discover your true nature is the path one takes by right view, right intention, right speech, right action path, <clears throat> right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and a right concentration. This path has been followed by all the great masters and teachers around the world. All these laws work in complete harmony with one another. The more a person is in tune with these laws and applies them in their daily life, the more their understanding and wisdom will grow. These laws are universal. They are beyond religion and dogma. By applying these laws, you'll begin to enrich your life. No matter what religion is, the foundation is the same. All religion is based upon proving your nature and to help and assist you to become a better person and to openly and ultimately help you to understand your true nature. It is priceless. Every one of us is custom built. We are also unique in our essence of the same. In my eyes, the modern day scientists and the mystics of whole are helping us to discover our true nature. There is a path leading to the cessation of suffering. This is what the Buddha taught and all the great masters have taught. The puzzle exists inside of you. This is where the journey starts. It's the most incredible journey you will ever take. It's the journey of discovering your true nature. It's the most exciting thing you can do because your essence is the journey. You are endless, boundless, beyond time and space. You are the sacred laws. This is your true nature. You, at your deepest levels, are kind and full of love. You, at your deepest levels, are full of patience and compassion. This is your true nature. This path will help you become a more precious human being. It will bring out the best in you. Yes, it requires work, but in eyes, in my eyes, this play. How incredible it is to daily learn how to bring, bring out the best side of ourselves in all circumstances. It's like a game. At first, it's real hard just to play, but as time goes on, the game gets easier, but also more challenging. I'm sure many of you who play video games and see that each level, the game becomes more difficult and challenging, but that's what makes it fun. The game of life is probably the most challenged game challenging game you will ever play. At times, we don't even know the rules or how to play the game. We just get thrown into life without any kind of proper preparation. The great teachers of old have taught this precious law to help you in this game of life. It's incredible. No one knows the theory of gravity. An apple will fall off the tree. Yet the inner laws we weren't taught. By knowing these laws and applying these laws, over time, our life becomes incredible. We see the potential of this life and see how our life is turning out. Life becomes more exciting and we understand and grow in wisdom. We learn to become co-creators 
and not reactive beings like leaves blown in the wind. This life becomes sacred. This path is not saying to drop life, but to embrace it. You don't have to become a monk to drop out of society. In fact, the more you walk on this path, every moment will help you to bring these divine qualities into your everyday life. This is what it's all about. To change the world, you must change yourself. Practical actions. Read some books on the, on the four noble truths. See booklets. Meditate daily. Daily pull out your negative weed. Cultivate these divine laws more and more into your daily life. Realize that many others have walked upon this path and left advice and guidance along the way. Read the great books of life that are all talking about the same thing. Learn how to be a co-creator in life instead of a reactive being. This one cause of human suffering. Learn how to tame your mind, educate yourself, read books or attend seminars or retreat. You don't have to be like the Buddha who left his kingdom. You don't have to be like the Christ. You can still live your own life. Yet all life is asking you to look within and see your true nature. You are indeed good.